Hello. I'm just trying to get you guys all in here. <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> I'm just trying to get your role sheet here. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I'm trying to get everyone in here. So just give me a second. How is everyone today? Okay. <laughs> Make sure they'll all get here. Everybody got their homework already finished? Yes. <laughs> Did you would? <laughs> I had my homework finished like last week, probably, huh? <laughs> Just don't forget that you got to put it on the, you know, on the remote. So you got to be on there doing that. And Miss. Connie just told me that you should check the time every 45 minutes to refresh the page. Yeah, otherwise you won't clock, the time won't, it'll clock you out and you won't know it. That, yeah, it happened to me yesterday, so yeah. It didn't really matter for me. Yeah. Every time I would it, touch the screen or I would refresh it, it still didn't do anything. It didn't. No, but I always start that timer and then I text them in. Uh -huh. And then regardless of if it times out or not, I always text out with all my work done. Okay, so here's what my students, even though she said we had to hit the refresh button, one of my students told me today that she literally had to go in and open up a file and then come out of that in order for that time to be registered, not just a refresh, but open something up on the program. So it's to in. That. Yeah, uh -huh. that's what I'm doing. I just opened something. Uh, like yeah. leave it for yeah. a few Instead minutes. Of just hitting the refresh button, open something on there so it has you interacting with it. Okay, and then it should have a, an accurate time frame. So, like, if you have to stop anyways because you had, you know, I don't know, you got to make dinner or whatever. Okay, you can log yourself off the remote and then just log back onto it, and we'll count all of that time on that day. Okay, you see what I'm saying? If you had to break up anyways, so. Before the end of the day, or before the end of you logging completely off, I would check your time to make sure it got all recorded on there, okay? Because it'll give you a total. You just have to remember to put the dates in. Because if you don't put the dates in, it's going to give you like zero. 
because it asks you, you know, like enable so that you can mark where you want the time to, to actually show you. So you do have to put that in there. Okay. Got a hold of everybody in there. Looking for my test questions here. I'll just have to go and really quick at break. Okay. So the first half of this lecture is going to be on chapters seven or five, excuse me, five on chemistry. Right? We're all on the same page. Should be like on page 133 in your study guide, and it's 5.1. We should start off with matter. Okay. All right. Let me take roll really quick. Okay, make sure everyone's in here. Victoria D, got you. I need your camera on, hun. Okay, Victoria. Um, Anna Martinez, let me see you. Okay, Adriana, got you. Okay, Athena, I need your face, pretty face. <laughs> Athena, <laughs> there you go. Okay, Anthony, got you. Jocelyn, all right, there you are. Ah, there you are. Okay. Lena, I have you. Susanna. Okay, where are you? Wave your little hand, Susanna. There you are. Okay, <laughs> thanks. Ava, got you. Okay. Sam, Samantha, I've got you. Okay, Venetia, I got you. Abby, got you. All right. Sarah. There you are. Wave your little hand. Shakur. There you go, okay. Where'd you go, Shakur? I know you're in here somewhere. Wave your hand <laughs> so I can see you moving. There you go. No, I'm, sure. I'm here. Oh, there you are, okay. All right, Elizabeth, Russell, okay, there you go. And Karina, oh, okay. There we go. So, Okay, so I've got everybody in here. Okay, so we should be on chemistry 5.1. Okay, in your handout or in your workbook study guide, it's on page 133. If you're using your textbook only, then it's going to be on page 109 to 110. Okay, so some of you, when you have this handout, I'm just going to show you something when they send it to you like this. Usually up in the corner right here, it'll tell you what page that it's on. Like that information for that whole page is on such and such page. Can you see that at the top? Huh? Okay. Just so that you know. Like, I don't know where to look in the book for it. It's like right there. It tells you what page it's, it's located on. All right. Okay. So we have matter. Okay. And this is anything that occupies space. So I'm going to have to pull up my whole lesson because I couldn't do it with the before. So give me a second to pull that up. But you can actually write in there on your matter anything that occupies space. Okay, well, I'm pulling this up. And then it has three forms, right? So those three forms are going to be a solid, a liquid, and a gas. But on the solid, I want you to write in there weight, volume, and shape next to solid, okay? Weight, volume, and shape. We actually have four, two right there. We have properties. Yeah. Oh, properties, thank you. I have only three, so I'm like, okay. All right, on liquids, you're going to put weight, volume, no shape, is there a fourth one on that one, like properties? 
No, so it goes matter, and then it goes uh -huh. properties, one through four, and then the three forms. Oh, okay. So let me go to your properties then and get that out of the way, because mine's way at the bottom, okay? okay. Your properties for number one are going to be color. Number two is going to be odor. Three is going to be weight or density. And number four is going to be hardness or softness. Okay. There's where your properties are, okay? Did that help? Well, and then I'll go back to your solids. Huh? <laughs> I said it fills the spot. Good, okay. I'm still trying to um, pull up your, <laughs> your lesson plan. So that's why I'm like going into your solids now. If you already filled that in, it would have been a weight, volume, and shape, right? Your liquid would have weight, volume, no shape. Okay, and then gases are going to be weight, indefinite volume and shape. Okay. Sorry, I accidentally put in um, for the properties, I put liquid gas and properties and all that stuff, but I messed that up. Just so, cross it out and then um, just write next to it. Well, I'm doing it online, so I can just oh. erase it back. But can you do the properties one more time for me, sure. please? What, one is color. Two is odor. Three is weight or density. And then four is going to be hardness or softness. Can you repeat? Okay, thank you. Okay, somebody else said what? Can I repeat what? For solid. The solid was weight, volume, and shape. And then the three forms, they're the solid gases and the properties, right? Right. There's solids, liquids, and gases. Yes. All right. So um, solid, you would have in there weight, volume, and shape. Okay. Weight, volume, and shape. Okay. Right. Liquid is going to be weight, volume, weight, volume, and no shape. Okay, and then gases. And gas is going to be weight and then indefinite volume and shape. Okay, oh my goodness, this thing is sensitive and not sensitive. <laughs> it's only on the lesson plan, so I'm still pulling this thing up. Oh my goodness. Do you find this program very slow on you guys' computers or does it work very fast? <laughs> slow, but it's not slower slow. than crap, huh? <laughs> that's what that's what the teachers have said, like it's so slow. You're waiting for it to put everything in, you're like, oh my God. Okay, your next area should be organic and inorganic, correct? No, it's changes in matter and then it's physical. Oh, changes in matter, okay. Okay, physical and then it's organic. Okay, it's below, organics below that on yours? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So in your physical, you're going to put, it changes its characteristics. Okay, without making a new substance. Okay. And basically what they're saying there is, I'm just changing its appearance, but it's still the same thing. So I'm gonna use water as an example. Okay, if I freeze it, right? it's going to be ice cubes, but if I let it melt, it's still back to water, right? It's still water no matter what, but it's just changing its appearance from a frozen form to just regular liquid form, right? So that's what a physical change would be. 
It's just a change in the characteristics without making a new substance. Does everyone understand that? Okay, to make this easier for you in your understanding for hair, okay? If I was going to set someone's hair, I shampooed her and I blow dried her, right? Okay, and I made it look one way and then I got her wet again and I blew dried and I made it look a different way. I haven't changed anything different except for the way it looks, but it's still the hair, it's just like regular straight hair. Let's just say it's virgin hair, okay? When I do a chemical change, I literally change and make a new composition or a new product. But think about this, when I do a perm, I've chemically altered that hair forever, right? It changed totally. I cannot revert it back like I could with my water and my ice, okay? So under chemical, you're just going to write in there, it's a change in a substance that creates a new substance. A change in a substance that creates a new substance. Okay, so if I had done someone's hair and gave her a perm, I've literally altered everything, right? I used a chemical and I changed her hair completely now. Changed the way it looked and changed the way it feels, okay? So that's different than just changing its appearance. We've literally changed it all together and made something new. So now I can't like separate it and revert it back to its original form because I've made a new substance. So do you understand what I mean by that? I can shampoo a blow dryer all I want, as long as I don't alter it with chemicals, it'll still be my physical change, okay? But once I do a, like hair color on it, or if I've done perming or relaxing or something like that, I've altered it permanently, so that's gonna be my chemical change. Okay. All right, it's pulling up my lesson while it's doing that, I'll change screens here. Um, here and here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Still working. Make sure I let Max in. And who else did I let in just a second ago? I'll let me know who they are when it comes up. Okay. Thank you. Okay, who just came in with Max? Alicia. Who is it? Alicia Jordan. Alicia? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you, hon. Thank you. Uh-huh. Okay, let me get this down. Uh -huh. Click. No, you're going to wait. <laughs> Just move down the page for me. There we go. Oh, I have to go down here for these. Oh. Come on. You guys can see exactly what I'm trying to do, right? <laughs> I'm fighting with this stupid machine. Because it wants to play the video so bad. Okay. So we have organic and inorganic, correct? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Poor thing. That's where it's supposed to be right now. Okay. Organic is matter that is now living or was once alive. Okay. It's matter that is now living or was once alive. Okay, and you're also gonna add there, it contains carbon. So I'm one of those like, look, those freaky people that believe in aliens, <laughs> okay? So when they send out these little um, modules out to different planets, what they're looking for is carbon because then they know that life can grow there, okay? So that's basically what your organic means. Your inorganic is matter that is not alive or was never alive, okay? And it does not contain carbon. So this would be like rocks, 
minerals, that kind of stuff. Your organic, I guess an example would be like plants and animals, right? Even our own body. Right? So you should have organic and inorganic. One has carbon, one does not. Okay, what are we waiting for here, ladies? Here it comes. <laughs> Might take it a minute to get itself loaded. Okay. <clears throat> so you should be on the next page, correct? I know it's kind of boring, huh? When you have to wait for this slide presentation. Yeah. All right. Well, let's wait for the page to come up. <laughs> All right. We have elements, correct? At the top of your page? Uh -huh. Yeah. 134? All right. So elements are basic substances that cannot be broken down into simpler substances. Okay. Basic substances that cannot be broken down into similar substances. Where did that go? Of course. Yes. Why am I not getting this? Is Hi. Is it on the phone? Uh-huh. It's okay. What you need? Okay. What we test in the chat is for money. Uh, um four? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. This week. This week? Yeah. Okay, so I'll have to be given the next test. Like, well, you'll give the nights next week, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we're in chemistry. We started that. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Today and some, and yesterday I went through. Well, I'm going to go through them today. But I went through the test questions last yeah. night and today mm -hmm. I mean, uh, for electricity. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Okay. And I can't get this to come up at all. <laughs> Does not want to work. So it's just you and I today. Sorry. <laughs> no slides. It doesn't want to open up for me. So you just get me. I'm so sorry. <laughs> All right. I want to let you, I don't know if this is put into your book, right below elements. Okay. You need to write in there. All matter is composed of atoms, which make up elements. Okay. So write that below your elements where you wrote basic substances. Right below that, put in there. All matter is composed of atoms which make up elements. Okay. All right, then you should have those little bubbles below, right? The number, the element, the symbol, and the form, correct? All right. Yeah. So number one, okay, under element, you're going to write hydrogen, okay? Its symbol is an H and its form is a gas. Okay. All right, the next one is the number six. Okay, and that stands for carbon as its element. Its symbol is a C and its form is a solid. All right, your next one under the number is a seven, okay? And the element is nitrogen, okay? Its symbol is an N and its form is a gas, okay? All right, the next one, the number is eight. The element is oxygen. Its symbol is an O and its form is a gas. Okay. Your next one is the number 16 and the element is sulfur. The symbol is an S 
and the form is a solid. Okay. So if you rearrange those letters, it actually makes up the acronym COENS, which stands for carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, and sulfur. And that's the way to remember actually what your hair is made up of, your hair, skin, and nails, okay? As the actual elements of Cohen's. All right, so I don't know if that tells you on your little book. Does it say Cohen's, okay, in your study guide? Not These are the elements. It tells you in the book. Okay, it makes up the elements of hair. Okay. All right, so then your next word is atoms, correct? All right, an atom is the smallest complete unit of an element. Smallest complete unit of an element. Okay, and I'm sure you're all asking yourself, why do I need to know any of this stuff? Okay, and what, what, how do I relate this to hair? Well, you okay, do. you do, huh? Okay, well, do. okay, well, listen, to, I'm going to tell you why. Okay, all right, your as you noticed, atoms make up to like your elements, and it goes further forward. When we're actually working on hair and we're doing chemicals to them, whether we are, let's just say bleaching, we're decolorizing a hair, okay? We all know we're not supposed to take that hair to the level of white, right? Because then the integrity of the hair is gone. It's basically like stretchy wet cotton, okay? Not hair anymore. So what, what they're telling us is that it will revert backwards, okay? So it goes back to its element. Once you break it past its bonds, you break the bonds, it goes backwards to where it previously sits, which would be like its element. It's going backwards. I hate to say that. We're going to go forward is our description, but you're going to go backwards when you destroy the hair, okay? When there's no integrity left, okay? That's why it now no longer is hair. It doesn't have that, that strength and ability. That's why we need to know. We want to make sure that we don't take the hair back to its original form, like little tiny speck. But that's basically what happens when you bleach somebody to the white stage. You don't have hair. I don't know what you want to call it, but it's not hair anymore. It's not made up of all the elements that make the integrity of it, of the hair. All right, let's go to our three parts of the atom, okay? The first one is the proton, okay? This is a positive charge, okay, positive charge, and it gives the atom its name, okay? It gives the atom its name. All right, you ready for the next one is your neutron, okay? This has no electrical charge, it's neutral, okay? But it determines the weight of the atom, okay? It determines the weight of the atom. All right, then you have your electron, which now is a negative charge, okay? And it makes it possible for atoms to combine with other atoms to form bonds, okay? So it makes it possible for atoms to combine with other atoms to form bonds. Okay, everybody get all of those? All right, and we're gonna move on to molecule, okay? And a molecule is two or more atoms joined together by a chemical bond, okay? Two or more atoms joined together by a chemical bond. Chemical what? Chemical bond, B-O-N-D. Okay, and these are the bonds that we actually rearrange when we do a perm, okay? All right, do you have like um, a talking point? Did they actually give that in the handout? Yes, it looks like this. We have like a matching thing. Like this kind of thing right here? Okay, so. On the first one, it says, describe the three forms of matter. 
Okay, you're going to write solid. What? Give me, um, give me your description of a solid. I'm going to tell you mine. I'm going to write a desk. That's a solid, right? A chair is a solid. Okay, so whatever your description of that solid is, you would put next to the solid. Okay, then you would put liquid. Okay, and my description was water. So you can put juice, anything that's running liquid at some point. Use that as your example. And then you have gas, okay? And we breathe air. So that's one of them, or you choose one of the gases from our elements, okay, as an example. But that's basically what they asked for. So I had a solid, which would be my desk, liquid would be my water, and gas is the air that we breathe, okay? Then it says, and the elements that make up hair. So that would have been my Cullens, right? So I would have carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, and sulfur. That's all you put in that little bubble. Okay. I need to write Cohen so I know what <laughs> I remember what it was. I don't have that. You don't have that? What? No, we don't A have page? it. Okay. And don't worry about it. Some of them do, so I'm going to go through it so I'm not skipping over it. Um, the next part was to draw an atom, correct? Okay, and you had to locate the neutrons, the protons, and the electrons. Okay, and that's all you had to do. Okay, it kind of looks like this. Let me get my picture up there. Can you see my little picture? I see it. No, we don't have that. <laughs> we okay. just have the matching. Yeah, and you would see that. Um, then it goes down to the matching, right, at the bottom? All right. Okay, so number one, it says change in the substance characteristics without making a new substance. Anybody want to take a guess? It is a physical it's change. A change. Oh. It's a physical change. Okay. And number two is the negative electric electrical charge. Electron. Electron. Yep. Okay. And third one is change in the substance that creates a new substance. Chemical. Okay. Chemical change. Good. Okay. Um, four, anything that occupies space? Matter. Matter, okay. And the smallest complete unit of an element? Atom. Good. Good. Okay, we're going to change the page. And we're going to come up with chemical bonds, correct? I'm going to close this yes. thing out. So good. Okay, we're on the same page then, <laughs> finally. <laughs> All right. So a chemical bond is going to be atoms combined chemically. Okay, atoms combined chemically to create compounds that eventually create the protein of hair. So this is how it should read. Atoms combined chemically to create compounds that eventually create protein of hair. Okay, so I'll break it down if you're still writing it in there, okay? The atoms combine chemically, okay, if you're still writing it, okay. to create compounds that eventually create the protein of hair. Sorry, I get so Did everyone get that part filled in? Okay, good. All right, amino acids. This happens to be one of the test questions. <laughs> okay. All right, this is compounds of Cohen, C-O-H-N, okay? And 22 common amino acids joined together in chains to make protein. So let's break it down again. Compounds of C, O H N. Okay. And 22 common amino acids. 22 common amino acids joined together in chains to make protein.
Everyone get all of that in there? Yes. Okay. All right. Then we go down to protein. Okay. And protein, this is what our hair is made up of, right? It's made up of a protein called keratin. So you're going to write that in there. Okay. Hair is made up of a protein called keratin. It's 97% keratin and 3% trace minerals. Okay. 90, 97% keratin and 3% trace minerals. Now hair has 19 of the 22 amino acids in it, okay? Just wanna give you that heads up. Hair has 19 of the 22 common amino acids. Animals actually have the same amount of amino acids as human hair. So just an you know, like sheep, a wool, all that kind of stuff. They all have the same <clears throat> amount. All right. <clears throat> Has everyone filled that part in? Yes. All right. We're moving on to the hydrogen bond. Okay. Hydrogen bonds are weak bonds. Okay. These are weak bonds that can be easily broken okay, with heat or water. So I'm gonna go back to that analogy of the shampoo and blow dry, okay? Or shampoo and set. What I'm actually doing is breaking down the hydrogen bonds in the hair to rearrange it to make a physical change, right? Because I changed her appearance, all right? So those hydrogen, they're only broken by heat and water, okay? So like when I get it wet and when I dry it and set it, all right? Um, a salt bond, okay, is the result of what's known as attraction of unlike charges. So you might have to write that part in there, okay? It's the bond is a result of the attraction of unlike charges. Can you repeat hydrogen bond? Uh, hydrogen bond are weak, W-E-A-K bonds that can be easily broken by heat or water. But mine doesn't say that. Mine says the hydrogen atom. Atom in one molecule. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to give you the definition that you're gonna use for your textbook as far as a test, okay? That's like the technical term that you won't have to use that part of it, I guess, in a test question. Okay. You know, I say that they are asking you certain questions about this in for your testing purposes, right? They're not gonna get into the detail of that hydrogen, but they do want you to know that it's the, the weakest bond and it's the one that gets changed when you're doing a physical change, okay? Like when you use water or heat. So shampoo, blow dry. There's your water and heat example. Does that make sense? Uh, is that okay, okay if we leave right that part blank? No, you can actually just put in there that it's the weak bond, okay? It's a weaker bond. And it it says that right on the part we have the filling for. It's electrons. Oh, it's electrons. Thank you. All right, I'll read that whole thing, and you tell me if this is the part that goes in there. Okay. Okay. All right. It says the hydrogen atom in one molecule is attracted to an atom of another molecule that has many negative electrons. There you go. Okay. Hair has many hydrogen bonds, which are individually very weak and can easily be broken by heat and water. So out of that, for testing purposes, you need to know that it's weak, okay? And it's broken by heat and water, okay? That's, that's how the questions are gonna be written around that little area, not the whole fill in the blank part, <laughs> okay? All right, then the salt bond, is that a filling also? Yes. Okay, so it's the bond is a result of the attraction of unlike charges. The negative charge in one amino acid grouping attracts the positive charge in another amino acid grouping. Okay, does that fill in your blank? Mm -hmm. okay. All right, and then the disulfide bond. Okay, this is the chemical bond that forms between protein and the, between protein structures and sulfur type side chains joined with other sulfur type side chains that form disulfide bonds. So 
it, did that fill in what you needed to fill in? So then I can make a definition for you on this one, okay? A disulfide bond is broken when we're using chemicals. So it's an, it alternates it permanently. So it would be, this would be doing a chemical change to the hair, right? Because I've now literally changed the structure of that hair because I've permed it or I've relaxed it or I've colored it, okay? So your disulfide gets changed during some type of chemical change. And a hydrogen bond gets broken when we're doing a physical change. Does that make it easy for you to remember on that part? Because mm -hmm. the other part, you don't really need to know that whole fill in that sentence, that type of stuff. It's What's important is that you know that the hydrogen one is the weaker one because they'll ask questions on hydrogen and they'll ask about the sulfide bonds. Because those are the most important for us. If we destroy that, the hair is not hair anymore. Okay, that could be from overprocessing a perm or a relaxer when you overlap. Okay, or when you bleach the hair too light. Okay, all of those are talking about changes that we don't want. We want to rearrange the disulfide bonds, but we don't want to break them completely. Okay, all right. Just so that you know, right? This van der Waals, this one's kind of funny. Okay. This is an atomic group that prefers an environment with other groups that have the same structure similar to theirs. Okay, was that a fill-in also? Similar. Similar is the word, okay. And to be honest, the van der Waals have nothing that we need to know about as far as testing purposes. All you need to know is the hydrogen and salt. It's the same thing as like a hydrogen, it's a weak bond. Okay, but we need to know which ones are weak and which ones are strong, like the sulfide. And they'll ask you over and over, what's the most important bond for a cosmetologist? Okay, and it's gonna be the disulfide bond. Okay. All right, and you turn the page to your N bonds or what's also known as peptide bonds. Okay, these are the backbone of all protein molecules. Okay, the backbone of all protein molecules. They're going to link amino acid protein chains together end to end so that you don't disturb the end bond, okay? So basically, you just need to note it's the backbone of all the protein molecules, okay? It's holding everything together, all right? Backbone of what? Of all the protein molecules, okay? Because our hair is made out of that protein, right? Okay. Now, your side bond, okay, your side bond actually is, okay, your disulfide, your hydrogen, your salt. So in your little bubble where it says, or um, excuse me, the definition for side bond, you're going to put down link the long spiraling protein chains together, okay? You're going to link the long spiral protein chains together, okay, and then I'm going to give them to you, hydrogen, salt, disulfide, and van der Waals, the four that we were just talking about, okay? Hydrogen, salt, disulfide, and van der Waals. Those are the four side chains. Hydrogen. Side <laughs> disulfide and van der Waals. Um, remember the page prior to it, we had van der Waals forces? That's what they're talking about. So if you list all four that we just discussed, right? We went through the hydrogen bond, we went through the salt bond, the disulfide bond, and then the van der Waals forces. That would be the four that they're talking about, okay? All right, it kind of gets kind of confusing. You're like, oh my God, the best way I could describe it when I was actually showing students how to understand it, I took pipe cleaners, right? And then I wrapped the pipe cleaner around one of them when I showed how it gets rearranged when you do a perm. Okay, so what it does is it opens up the hair, straightens it out, and then it takes the shape of whatever I've used, you know, like whatever size rod I've got in there. Okay, and then I rearrange it and lock it in. So that's the best way to describe it. You've got two sticks, <laughs> pipe cleaners. Okay, one's straight and the other one's gonna have the curl on it. Okay, so I just wrap another pipe cleaner around it so that you get the idea of what's going on. We rearrange the hair, so like it breaks it down a little bit, we change its structure and then we lock it into the new structure. Okay, kind of like perming and neutralizing. Best way I can describe it because <laughs> that's what you need it for. <laughs> All right. 
that should cover your end bonds and your side bonds. Okay, and that's why it gives you the illustration at the bottom. Your first line in that illustration should say hydrogen. Okay, the second line should say disulfide. The third one should say salt. And the fourth one is Van der Waals. So I'm talking about right here. This part right here. Okay, hold on. I'm like, okay. That's I'm right. All right. Did you see that picture though that I had up here? Yeah. Okay. So no, I'm going to repeat one more time. Line so you can fill it in. Yes. Uh, on the book, on, on our book, like. Yeah, um, it doesn't show that. Uh, the third one is this uh it's disulfide bond the second one shows salt bond salt. Yeah. okay <laughs> yeah mine's just the opposite okay so yours is just salt for number two and three is disulfide so yeah the disulfide should be the two s's right the two okay s's. yeah yeah mm -hmm. there you go I was just about to look because I was like, I'm pretty sure it was different. Than yeah. <laughs> Could you repeat all those one more time? Yeah. Okay, so the first line is the hydrogen. Okay, the second one is going to be the salt. The third one is disulfide. And then the very bottom is the van der Waals. Right? Yes. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. So do you have talking points on your, do you guys all have this part of it? This talking point part? No, ours is done. Okay. Then it should go right into like the chemistry of the products and ingredients that we're using, right? Like the pH scale? Oh yes, 5.2. Okay, all right. So. We're going to move on to the 5.2. Now, this is basically what you need to know for the chemistry part of your testing, okay? Because if we know where those chemicals sit as far as acid or alkaline, we'll know exactly what it's going to do to the hair, okay? If it's going to open the hair up, or if it's going to close it back down, that's why you need to know what a pH scale is, okay? So where it says potential hydrogen, okay, is that your first word on the top? Yeah. All right. You're going to write a unit of measurement that indicates whether a substance is going to be like an acidic, alkaline, or a neutral. Okay. Wait, where are we writing this? Right where it says potential of hydrogen in your smart notes, right? Okay, next to potential of hydrogen. Okay, let me finish. Potential of hydrogen is going to be a unit of measurement, okay? that determines oh. whether a substance, it's basically potential hydrogen stands for pH, okay? In the pH scale, that's what it stands for. Okay, and the pH scale stands for a unit of measurement, okay? That determines whether a substance is going to be acidic, alkaline, or neutral, okay? That's basically what it means. Okay, so potential of hydrogen you should have up there. pH, okay, because it's the pH part of the pH scale. All right, and it's a unit of measurement that determines whether a substance is acidic, alkaline, or neutral. Okay, what's our hair made out of? Anybody remember? Okay, it's made out of a protein, but is it an acid or an alkaline? Where would our hair sit on a pH scale? Acid. Yeah, on an acid side, because it's like 4.5 to 5.5, right? Right. That's where our hair sits. Okay. So our hair is a little on the acid side. That's why we usually call it acid ba balanced, right? You've heard that term before. Okay. So what we're trying to determine. Huh? What, Anthony? That was, no. oh, I was going to put zero. <laughs> All right. So next to water-based solutions, okay, the pH can only measure the amount of acid or alkaline in a water-based solution. Somebody needs to shut their you mic off. 17? Shut off yeah. your mic, Shakur. Thank you. 
So what was it that you said, sorry? Okay, so under water-based solution, you're going to write in there, the pH measures the amount of an acid or an alkaline in a water-based solution only. Okay, things that can be dissolved with water, okay? Now, just because something is a cream doesn't necessarily mean it's not a water-based cream. So just know that, okay? Because we have like massage creams here that are water-based and I can literally find the pH on my massage cream because it's a water-soluble product, okay? All right, so basically what they're saying is if it cannot be broken down with water, I cannot measure it as far as an acid or an alkaline, okay? All right, so an acid is going to have more positive hydrogen ions, which is I-O-N-S, okay? It has more positive hydrogen ions than negative hydroxide ions. Okay, so more positive hydrogen ions than negative hydroxide ions. Okay, your neutral is going to have equal numbers of hydrogen and hydroxide ions. Okay, the equal number of hydro hydrogen and hydroxide ions. Sorry, could you repeat that one more time? It has the equal number of hydrogen and hydroxide ions because it's neutral, so it's going to be even. Can you repeat the water-based solution one? Okay. The pH measures the amount of an acid or alkaline in a water-based solution only. Did you get it, Anna? I think so. Okay. The, Sorry, the pH, that's all right. The pH measures the amount of acid or alkaline. Hold on a second. The, okay. <laughs> the pH measures the amount of acid or alkaline in a water-based solution only. Okay. All right. Now go ahead. Whoever was just talking. <laughs> Sorry, could you do neutral one more time? Okay. Neutral is equal number of hydro hydrogen and hydroxide ions. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, now your alkaline is going to say more negative hydroxide ions. Okay, more negative hydroxide ions. So your textbook should have some examples of different things that sit on the pH scale, okay? Um, I have a big chart on my wall right there telling me where, like, where lemons are, where oranges are, where vinegar sits, um, where bleach sits, okay? Basically telling you on that pH scale, anything that's going to be on the alkaline side are going to be kind of caustic, okay? They could be like detergents and just heavy chemicals. On the acid side, okay, it can go as low as what battery acid is in your Car, okay, that like would be zero on the pH scale, all right? And then our skin would be 4.5 to 5.5, right? And then seven would be distilled water, which is equals, okay, that's would be my equal neutral, all right? And then on the other side, like I said, the alkaline side is gonna be more of a caustic because if you think about it, your sodium hydroxide is on that side, okay? When you do relaxers or you do perms, they're all on that side. So it sounds kind of funny. That's where you get that hydroxide and hydrogen atoms or ions. It's coming from the chemicals we're talking about. All right, so you have two boxes at the bottom, like little bubbles, right? You have an acid and you have an alkaline. Okay, in the acid one, what I want you to put in there is 0 0 0.026.99, okay? So it's basically telling you from zero, the number zero to 6.99, that's an acid, okay, on the pH scale, all right? And then you're going to put below that skin, hair, and nails, 
is 4.5 to 5.5. Okay, and then you're gonna add one more thing in there. More positive hydrogen ions. You're gonna put that in there, okay? More positive hydrogen ions. What was the second one? Um, skin, hair, and nails are acid balanced at 4.5 to 5.5. Okay, your alkaline should say 7.01 to 14 on the pH scale. Okay, 7.01 to 14 on the pH scale. And this should be more negative hydroxide ions. More negative hydroxide ions. Okay, so I'm just gonna list off a couple of things so you can get the idea of where they sit on the pH scale, okay? So lemon juice would sit at 2.5 on the pH scale, all right? Diet cherry Coke would sit at 3.0. That's why they use it to actually remove the corrosive stuff on your battery cables in your car. All right, distilled water is 7.0. Toothpaste is 8.5. Okay, and then you have ammonia, which sits at 12.5, at sorry. And then you have sodium hydroxide at a 14. <laughs> Even drain cleaner sits at like 14, you know, like Drano. Kind of crazy. These are the things that we use. And our skin gets attacked by it. That's why we wear gloves when we're using some of these things. Okay, so you do understand what an acid and an alkaline is, right? Okay, one more thing to think about why we need to know this, okay? We need to know if it's an acid or an alkaline, how that's gonna react to the hair, okay? What happens to the hair when we do that, all right? So we're softening and opening it up when it's an alkaline and we're closing it back down when we're doing an acid. Do you remember me talking about minus and plus for the electricity that we did, right? And I told you the negative, okay, would be more of alkaline solutions, right? We mixed baking soda and distilled water to do something to soften the skin, correct? To do extractions. Okay, so you're still adding your chemistry with your electricity, all right, if you think about it. All right, so if I was gonna do like a galvanic facial on someone, remember I could take the orange, right? Which is like a three and I can apply it to the skin and what it's gonna do is work like an acid on her face to break down dead skin cells, okay? Or I can use an alkaline on the other side and I'm using a caustic, like a more aggressive mechanical exfoliation on that side, okay? So one's softening it and the other one's hardening it, hardening it I guess you could say, okay? Like closing and opening. Same kind of thing. So that's how your chemistry is gonna work with your electricity, believe it or not. Okay, same thing with hair and skin. I'm trying to give you a, a balance of how this, these test questions are gonna read for you. So if you turn to the next page, it has the pH scale at the top, right? And you're going to put in there that it's a unit of measurement again, okay? And determines whether a substance is acid alkaline or neutral, okay? That's what your pH scale stands for, okay? And the P from the pH scale stands for potential and the H stands for hydrogen, <laughs> okay? So you have a unit of measurement and it determines whether the substance is acidic or alkaline or neutral, okay? That's what your pH scale does, All right? In your book, it says zero, then it says two, 6.99, correct? because we kind of filled this in before, you're gonna put in there, it's an acid range, okay? And if I was looking at litmus paper, my solution would turn red if it was very acidic, okay? It turns really red on the acid side, okay? Kind of like the red part of your um, battery cable. 
<laughs> Try and give you an idea of what it is, okay? And then 7.101, oh, excuse me, to 14 is gonna be your alkaline range, okay? Think of ammonia, okay? And that's gonna be more of like a yellowish green, okay, in color from the litmus paper. So if I poured my solution on, that's the colors I would see, okay? Ranging from red to like a yellow green on the other side, okay? They can do this with urine too. They can do it with a lot of different things that they test it. You can do um, your swimming pools. If anybody has a pool and they have to check the, the bleach content, you know, for the swimming pool, you're testing with a testing tube, right? And you put those, the water in there and it tells you whether or not it has enough chemicals in it or not. Or if you had to add to it, like more bleach or whatever, you have to add to that. It's basically doing the same thing. It's a unit of measurement. Okay, logarithmic, okay, this is, actually standing for each number increases by multitudes of 10. So what that means is there are 10 in between five to six, okay? Or six to seven, all right? But each number, let's just say seven to eight is 10, eight to nine is 10, nine to 10 is 10, okay? We're doing that way. But if I take seven and I go to nine, okay, it's gonna be, a hundred times stronger. If I go seven to 10, it's gonna be a thousand times stronger. If I go seven to 11, it's gonna be 10,000. So you're always gonna add another zero as you go up that scale, okay? But they're talking about from zero, okay? And going up to eight, you're gonna have your 10, okay? From seven to nine, it's gonna be a hundred. Now, do you see where I'm going with this? I'm multiplying it by 10. So you just add another zero. The same thing goes the opposite direction when you're going through an acid, okay? Because you have to look at it this way. Here's my middle, right, my seven. If I go higher, the larger the number, the stronger the alkaline. If I go to the left of it where I'm going my acids, the lower the number, the stronger the acid, okay? So what happens is the strongest point on both of them, acid or an alkaline, is going to be on the outside. So when I dilute it with water, I'm bringing it back like this, little by little by little till it's water again. Does that make sense? Okay, so the outside of each of these are gonna be the strongest point for acid and an alkaline. All right, so all you have to do on this one, you would go seven to six would be 10, right? Seven to five would be 100. Seven to four would be 1,000. See how I'm going that way? So I just wanna make sure you guys understand what they're talking about, all right? That's how they're measuring it. All right, you can go down to the test. Oh, go ahead. Can you repeat um, what we're putting for the zero to 6.99? Oh, you're just gonna put down acid range and you're gonna change, you're gonna write, it changes to the color orange red. It's like a red. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You repeat that again, sorry. Okay. So that zero point or zero to 6.99, you're gonna write acid range Okay, and it goes from orange to red. Red is like the darkest color, meaning like it could be zero, okay, on the pH scale, all right? And then you have alkaline for the 7.01 to 14, right? You're gonna write alkaline range and you're gonna write in there yellow green is the color when you're getting it at, at strongest point. It'll be like a yellowish green, you know, like chartreuse or something like that, okay. I'm gonna put in there um, neutral underneath that, which would be water, okay? And it's just equal, equal point of acid and alkaline. Where is that? Which one is that one? You just write that underneath by itself. You can just write neutral would be water. Okay, because we're always determining those three, right? Is it acidic, neutral, or alkaline in our products? Okay, so do you understand what the logarithmic means? Okay, you multiply it by 10, we'll give you the next number going up, okay? All right, I'm gonna finish the testing and acid balance and I'm gonna let you go on break, okay? So testing the pH, you can use three different things to do it, okay? The first one is going to be the nitrazine paper and I'm gonna spell it for you. It's N-I-T-R, a-Z-I-N-E, okay. It's also known as litmus paper, L-I-T-M-U-S, okay. 
The second one would be a pH pencil. That's what we use to test the skin because she might be like five over here and she might be 5.5 here and 4.4. So you take the marking of this pencil and you just draw it down and it'll literally change the color to like a yellowish green or it'll be on the reddish side. It literally changes that part of the skin to let you know that that pH is different. And the way that you, you can't sharpen the pencil, it has a string and it actually removes part of that paper. So it's set up for the next client. That's how it's disinfected. <laughs> it's weird, little pencil. Okay, and then the last one's gonna be a pH meter. This one's used like in the swimming pools when it's trying to check the chemical content of the pool, okay? All right, now acid balance. This is a big word that you need to know about, okay? It means, okay, that the product you're using is within the same pH as hair, skin, and nails, okay? It means that the product you're using when it's acid balanced, okay, is within the same range as hair, skin, and nails, which is 4.5 to 5.5. If a product says that it's pH balanced, you have to go pH balanced to what? It acid balanced, you know that it's pH balanced for the hair, skin, and nails, okay? That's what that means. Acid balanced is what we're looking for. We want something that we're not disrupting when we're cleaning it, because sometimes you can get too strong of a, a soap, right, on the alkaline side, and it strips the, the skin or the hair of its natural oils. We don't want to do that. So we want to clean something without changing the pH of the hair, because the hair reacts to it, okay? When it gets too alkaline on a product on the hair, it turns dry and frizzy, right? Okay, so I'm trying to get to, this is why we have to know what products we're using on the client's skin and hair. Okay, so I'm gonna take a break and let you guys come back at um, 145, 46, yeah, 146, <laughs> okay? And then we'll test for review of tomorrow's chat, um, test, okay? All right, I'll see you back here in 10 minutes, all right?
Hi, Venetia. JK. <laughs> I'm so confused with this. Like, I miss so many calls. I'm trying to fill up. Dude, her notes are like everywhere. Like, nothing's making sense. And I don't have anything for the. Um... I fill up most of the part before doing the class, but like some of the stuff is like, um, I just want to the short, yeah, the short term of it, but then it's just going all over. Putting in red and all this, no. Those I don't have anything for the end bonds and side bonds like she like That's for the what I, just, I just asked the end bonds and the side bonds I didn't put anything because all the definition was basically in the definition boxes yeah so that's why they gave us those bubbles because there there's nothing else to put on there yeah um, what's going on <laughs> what's going on no, have two bub we have two bubbles just under uh -huh. the uh, uh, the end bonds and the side bonds which we were supposed to fill up. Okay, hold on. I'll turn the page back because I think I know what you're going to put in there. Hold on. So on the side bonds and the end bonds. Yeah, we have two bubbles. Okay. Two boxes basically. Okay, end bond first. Should not be broken or revert back to amino acids. Can okay. you repeat that again? Uh -huh. Should not Can be I... broken. Should not be broken. broken? Correct. If broken, it reverts back to amino acid groups. Okay. That's when we break that hair down. If broken, it reverts back to amino acid groups. Mm -hmm. And the side bond will be the hydrogen bond, salt bond, and the yeah, so you're gonna you're gonna write in there hydrogen bond can be broken to form a physical change, basically what I gave you before. Okay. Hydrogen bond can be broken to form a physical change. Salt bond can be broken for a physical change. And then disulfide actually causes a chemical change. I'll be right back. A uh, disulfide bond can be broken to form physic uh, chemical change. Mm -hmm. Y'all ready for color tomorrow? Yeah. Oh, you guys doing color tomorrow? That's exciting. You get to play with the colors. We get to act like kindergartners is what we get to do. Yeah. <laughs> act like kindergartners is what we get to do. Yeah. It's like when you're in school. 
Is that what you're doing? Paint. Yeah, we we're probably gonna because she had the um the big jugs of color out. Yeah. Last time she did yeah. that, we, color had, we had to do <laughs> little, like we had this big color circle and we had to mix colors and yep. make different parts of the, yeah, I'm the color gonna... wheel. <laughs> Can you repeat the side bond again? The hydrogen bond can be broken to form a physical change. The salt bond can be broken to form a physical change. The disulfide, when broken, causes a chemical change. So you're like, what did I get out of that? <laughs> out of that whole part of the lecture is basically, if we know what type of a chemical we're using, we know how the hair is going to react to it, all right? On perming, you're going to have acid perms and you're going to have alkaline perms. Now, alkaline perms are stronger, okay? They're known as a cold wave, but they're the ones you're using on that real resistant hair, that gray hair, okay? Really difficult hair to, to curl. An acid one is going to be used when you want a, like a, a body wave or you want hair that's been previously chemically treated, like my lights on it or has like a tint on it. You want to choose something from the acid side. A little bit more gentler, but it still gives her a perm. You see what I'm saying? So you'll have to know by looking at, this is what I tell the students after they take the class of chemistry and, and their texture, is like, look on the box and see what the box says. Does it say thioglycol acid? Does it say ammonium thioglycol? Likely. Okay, then you'll know if you're using an acid or an al alkaline. So your acid will be that, um, that big long um, word that stands for gentle. So glycerol monoxide, remember that long word? <laughs> That's your acid chemical. Okay, let me think. I got like one minute here and I'll have all of these answers ready for you. Okay, so let's go to our attendance sheet here and we'll go around the room and go through these questions. Okay, you ready? Um, Victoria, you were number one there. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, here's your question. A unit of electric, electrical resistance is called a volt, an ohm, a watt, or an insulator. Sorry, could you repeat that one more time? A unit of electrical resistance is called a volt, an ohm, a watt, or an insulator. I want to say an ohm. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, um, Anna Martinez. Okay, this one's for you. Treatment with light rays is called phoresis, light therapy, mechanical effect, or combination cataphoresis. Light therapy? Yes, <laughs> good. Okay, Anthony, which type of light can be broken into individual wavelengths by a prism? Combination. Oh, good, good, good. Okay. Athena, are you it's there? Okay. Hello. <laughs> Hi, this one's for you. Okay. When performing an electrotherapy procedure, what apparatus or current conductor is used to bring the current from the appliance to the client's skin? Is it a watt, a resistor, an electrode, or a wall plate? 
Um, Electron. Yes. Good. Good. Okay, Jocelyn. This one's for you. Which type of current is an alternating current with mechanical effects to help produce muscle contraction? Is it Tesla, sporadic, sinusoidal, or high frequency? Sinusoidal? Yep, good, good. You guys are remembering this stuff from yesterday. <laughs> okay, Lena, this one's for you. Where'd you go? Are you with me still? Here. Okay, there you are. All right, this one's for you. Any electrically apply, electrically electrical appliance activated by the flow of an electric current, such as a blow dryer, is known as a conductor, an insulator, an electron, or a load. Hello. Good. Excuse me. Uh, huh? Um, did you receive my message? I just. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Hold on. <laughs> okay, I got that. Okay. <laughs> I didn't receive it because you already, I didn't I have to you already. <laughs> I didn't want to log out without you saying okay. it. Okay, go ahead, honey. Thank you. All right, um, Susanna. Okay, this one's for you. A measure of how much electric energy is being used is known as a volt, a watt, a load, or a conductor. A watt? Yes, good, good. All right, Ava, where'd you go? Are you back here? Wave your little hand. <laughs> uh, me? Ava. Oh, sorry. I'm looking for Ava. I'm here. Not here. Okay. Sorry. Where are you? Ava? I'm here. Okay. I just need to see your face. Okay. This question's for you. An amp is a unit of electrical resistance, frequency, strength, or pressure. Is it pressure? Um, it's going to be strength for an, an amp. Okay, when it, an ampere is a unit of electrical strength. Remember, like a stereo car, <clears throat> it will not get stronger and stronger when they turn it up louder and louder. Just think of how strong it gets because it's the strength. Okay. All right. Um, Samantha, are you here? There you are. Okay. Here's your question. An alternating current, which can be adjusted to different voltages to reduce heat, is known as sporadic, galvanic, sinusoidal, or high frequency. High frequency. Yes, good. Okay, Venetia, this one's for you. Materials that do not allow the electricity to flow through them are called conductors, insulators. Insulators. Excuse me. Insulators? Yes, you're right, insulators. Good. Okay, um, Abby, this one's for you. Are you back? Yes. Okay. All right, here's your question. The process of forcing an acid or an alkaline into the skin by applying a current to the chemical is called iontophoresis, phoresis, anaphoresis, and cataphoresis. Is it cataphoresis? This one's just, it's phoresis. When it's both of them in the question and it says acid and alkaline or, or, or and or, <laughs> okay, it's always gonna be phoresis because that's the general term for the whole thing, okay? Okay. Anaphoresis actually breaks down what you use on the alkaline side and cataphoresis would be the acid side. But when it says both, it's gonna be phoresis. Okay, um, Sarah. Are you there? Yes. Okay. Here's your question. Light, heat, chemical, and magnetic changes are all produced by force, conductors, 
electricity or a short circuit. Electricity. Yes, electricity. Okay. Um, is Shakur still here? Are you still with me? Yes, I'm still here. Okay, here's your question. Okay. High frequency and alternating current are characteristics of which type of electrotherapy? Is it galvanic, Tesla, sinusoidal, or direct current? The one. It's going to be Tesla because high frequency oh, okay. is going to mean Tesla. I, yes. I thought it was that. I was going to say Tesla, but I was uh, hesitant. Okay. Remember that was my first things. answer. Yep. Tesla, high frequency, or the violet ray. They all mean the same. Good. Okay. okay. Uh, <laughs> Elizabeth, this one's for you. Are you in there somewhere? Let's see. Where is she? Elizabeth, are you still with me? See, please. Okay, she hasn't come back yet. All right, Karina, is she back? Are you back? There you are. Yeah. Okay, here's your question. The electrode that is negatively charged during an electrotherapy treatment is known as anode, cathode, insulator or grounding wire? Can you repeat the question? The electrode that is negatively charged during an electrotherapy treatment is known as an anode, cathode, insulator, or grounding wire. Is it an uh, insulator? It's going to be um, a cathode. Oh my God. Okay. Remember, your um, electrodes are always going to be like ODEs on the end of it. So cathode and anode. Do you see what I'm saying? The electrode is spelled E-L-E-C-T-R-O-D-E. -E, o -D -E. Okay, and your electrodes for this are going to be cathode and anode. Just giving you a heads up on it. Okay, thank you. All right. mm -hmm. Alicia already left. Okay, Isabella, this one's for you. Hi. Okay, a constant electric current flowing in one direction is called alternating current, direct current, sporadic current, or sinusoidal current. Direct. Yes. Good. Okay. Victoria, this one's going to be yours. Okay. Okay. Tesla, a high frequency current, is also known as the red ray, the violet ray, the infrared ray, or the ultraviolet ray? Um, I want to say the ultraviolet. It's going to be violet. Remember, ultraviolet is when you tan, so you don't want to use that, okay? So oh, violet okay. is what on the machine, it actually turns a purple color, like a violet color inside the glass electrode. That's where it gets the name oh. of the violet ray. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, Anna Martinez, you still with me? Okay, looks like she's blocked out. <laughs> All right. Um, Sorry. Uh, are you there? Okay. Here's your question. Which electrotherapy treatment can cause sebum to be broken down or blackheads to be liquefied as in deep pore cleansing? Is it sinusoidal, anaphoresis, cataphoresis, or disincrustation? Disincrust. The last yeah, one. Disincrustation. <laughs> and that's a big worry, huh? <laughs> okay, good. Um, Adriana, this one's for you. Where'd you go? Oh, I'm here. Okay. All right, your question is, a constant electric current flowing in one direction only is Direct. sporadic, sinusoidal, direct, 
or alternating current? Direct. Yes. Okay. Um, Anthony, this one's for you. Materials that best transport electricity is known as? A conductor. A oh, okay, good, look at you. <laughs> All right, Athena, you out there? Yeah. Okay, this one's for you. The application of special currents or modalities that have a variety of effects on the skin is called light therapy, electrotherapy, chemical therapy, or mechanical therapy? So light therapy? It's gonna be um, electrotherapy, because electricity. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, next one is Jocelyn. Okay, are you still there? Here you are. All right, which of the following materials does not allow a current to pass through it? Metal, water, carbon, or alcohol? Is it alcohol? Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Um, Lena, this one's for you. Are you there? No, you're somewhere. There you are. Okay. A volt is a unit of electrical strength, pressure, frequency, or resistance. Strength? It's pressure. Volt is a unit of electrical pressure. Okay. Thinking the V for a volt would be the volleyball and you used pressure to hit the volleyball. <laughs> it's the only way I can remember it. Sorry if I'm giving you weird. <laughs> Weird analogies, but this is the only way I can remember it. Okay, my next one goes to Susanna. Okay. Ooh, are you there, Susanna? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Your question is paratic current is used chiefly to cause soothing effects, chemical effects, the transfer of heat, or muscle contraction. Muscle contractions? Good, yes. Yes. Okay. Ava, are you there? Ava. I'm here, Ms. Julia. Okay. So here's your question. Which of the following devices breaks the flow of current when an overload occurs? Is it a fuse, an insulator, a circuit breaker, or a grounding wire? Can you repeat the question again, please? Which of the following devices breaks the flow of current when an overload occurs? Is it a fuse, an insulator, a circuit breaker, or a grounding wire? A circuit breaker? Mm -hmm. Good. Um, Max, are you out there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, this one's for you. <laughs> I'm getting some of those ones I missed. <laughs> All right, how many milliamps equal one amp? Is it 10, 100, 1,000, or 100,000? Um, it's 10, right? Now this one's gonna be 1,000. 10 are the increments for logarithmic, okay? But um, the milliamps are 1,000. It's one 1,000 of an amp. Okay, um, Isabella. Okay, your question, are you there? Yes. Okay, sorry. Okay, the direct current used in electrotherapy treatment is Tesla, sporadic, galvanic, or sinusoidal? Um, Tesla. No, the direct current's gonna be galvanic. Oh. Okay, it's the only one that's, got, that's like a direct current. Everything else is always alternating current. Okay. Um, one more here. Um, Samantha, you still there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, there you are. All right. Your question is this. Paratic current is used chiefly to cause soothing effects, chemical effects, transfer of heat, or muscle contraction. 
muscle contractions. Good. Okay. Okay, I got enough time to go over one more time. Okay. Are you ready? Always ready. <laughs> okay. Shakur, are you there? Yeah. Okay, here's your question. A unit of electrical resistance is called a volt, an ohm, a watt, or an insulator? Is it a Yes, good. Okay. Sarah, are you out there? Okay, yes. your question is, which type of light can be broken down into its individual wavelengths by a prism? Infrared, ultraviolet, combination, or incandescent? Can you repeat that question, please? Okay. Which type of light can be broken into its individual wavelengths by a prism? Infrared, ultraviolet, combination, or incandescent? Combination? Yes. Good. Okay. Elizabeth Russell. Okay. Are you there? Elizabeth. Okay. Corina. Where are you? I'm here. Okay, there you are. Okay, this is your question. Treatment with light rays is called phoresis, light therapy, mechanical effects, or combination cataphoresis. Uh, can you repeat the answer? Treatment with light rays is called phoresis, light therapy, mechanical effects, or combination cataphoresis. Light therapy? Yes. Good. Okay. Um, Victoria, this one's yours again. Okay. okay. Um, when performing an electrotherapy procedure, what apparatus or current conductor is used to bring the current from the appliance to the client's skin? Is it the watt, resistor, electrode, or wall plate? Um, I want to say wall plate. This one's the electrode. Okay. Electrode, okay. Okay. Um, Anna Martinez. Okay. Any electrical appliance activated by the flow of an electric current, such as a blow dryer, is known as conductor, insulator, electron, or load? Load. Good. Okay. Um, Adriana. Here. Okay. Yours is going to be a measure of how much electric energy is being used is known as a volt a watt, a load, or a conductor? A watt. Good. Okay. Um, Anthony, this one's for you. An amp is a unit of electrical resistance. Oh, yeah. Good. Good. All right. Um, Jocelyn, okay. This one's your question. An alternating current which can be adjusted to different voltages to produce heat is known as paradic, galvanic, sinusoidal, or high frequency. Galvanic? Oh, uh, the heat's gonna be the um, high frequency. Remember that's the thermal action? Okay. Um, Lena, this one's yours. Materials that do not allow electricity to flow through them are called insulators, conductors, open circuits, or closed circuits. Insulators? Yes. Okay, Susanna. Okay, the process of forcing an acid or an alkaline into the skin by applying a current to the chemical is known as phoresis, anaphoresis, Cataphoresis or iontophoresis? Cataphoresis? 
Make sure you throw Reese's on that one, okay? Because it's got both of them in there. Like it has <laughs> an azimuth outline in there. All right, 12, um, let me see, 12. Ava, is she back yet? I can't remember if I got her last time. Yeah, you're there, Ava. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, this one's for you. Light, heat, chemical, and magnetic changes are all produced by force, conductors, electricity, or a short circuit. Can you repeat the question again? Light, heat, chemical, and magnetic changes are all produced by force, conductor, electricity, or a short circuit. The first one? It's gonna be electricity, is it light, heat, chemical, and magnetic changes are all produced by electricity? That's one I just read, right? <laughs> all right. Um, Sam, which electrotherapy treatment can cause sebum to be broken down or blackheads to be liquefied, as in deep pore cleansing? Is it sinusoidal? Decrustation. Oh, disincrustation. Yeah, it is. You guys are remembering before I have to put them out there anymore. Let's see if we can do this the rest of the way. <laughs> All right, Benicia. Tesla, a high frequency current is also known as red ray, violet ray, infrared ray, or ultraviolet ray. Violet ray? Yep, correct. Um, Abby. Okay. Yes. The electrode that's negatively charged during an electrotherapy treatment is known as Anode, cathode, insulator, or grounding wire. Can you repeat the first two? Okay, anode and cathode. A cathode? Yep, that's right, good. Okay, um, Sarah. All right, a constant electric current flowing in one direction is called Direct current, sporadic current, sinusoidal current, or alternating current. Uh, does anyone want to answer that one? Direct current. Direct current, yes. Okay, one last, please, left here. Okay, so this is gonna be whoever answers it, okay? <laughs> Materials that best transport electricity are Conductor. known as conductors. Good. All right, the application of special currents or modalities that have a variety of effects on the skin are called? Electrotherapy. Electrotherapy, good. Okay, which of the following materials does not allow a current to pass through it? Alcohol. Alcohol, yep. All right, a volt is a unit of electrical pressure. 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 Okay, sporadic current is used chiefly to cause muscle, muscle contraction. Muscle contraction, good. Okay, which of the following devices breaks the flow of current when an overload occurs? Circuit breaker. Circuit breaker. Circuit breaker. Good. All right. And the direct current used in electrotherapy treatment is called? Galvanic. Galvanic. Good. And how many milliamps equal one amp? 1,000. 1,000. That's it. You guys, you did really well. All right. I'm actually letting you guys go if you don't have any questions. Yeah? I actually yeah. have one question. Yeah, yeah. I got a question. Go ahead. Ask me. <laughs> so for our homework, um, on the handout, it says to, it's a project using the five litmus papers provided, test five different uh -huh. products and take pictures and record your results. So what do we do for that? I know okay, they gave so us why don't you, these things, but I don't know. Okay. So why don't you find five things that you can actually dip into, like a liquid. All right. So you can use like Shampoo. Okay. okay. You can use conditioner. You can use a toner. 
A what? Someone else have a different right, uh, Kool-Aid. <laughs> Anything that's a liquid base, you want to see what its pH is. That's what they're asking you to do, correct? Yeah. Okay. So you're going to okay. write down if it's an acid or an alkaline or if it's a neutral, okay? And what the okay. product is, okay? Okay. They didn't have any specific like ones that they wanted you to do, though, right? They told no, you to pick it just says five different products. Okay. All right. Anyone else have anything they needed added to it? Yeah. No? Me, okay, Anna, um, go ahead. For the identify the importance of the pH balance product, which is a, one of our questions. Um, I'm trying to think like what, how to write that. Okay, she said what now? Oh, I said um, for the question on um, Number two, uh, and I think it's E, it says identify the importance of pH balance products. Okay, so our skin, okay, is pH balanced at 3 point, or 4.5 to 5.5, right? Okay, so when we alter that by using an alkaline soap, let's say, okay, which is like a seven something, okay, it raises the pH, which ends up stripping the natural oils from the skin, right? So then you have to replace them put them back in there. Otherwise, the skin's gonna be dry, flaky, tight, okay? Scalp does the same thing that the skin does, okay? So if you're using incorrect product, let's say on chemically treated hair, if I used an alkaline shampoo on somebody that had hair that's been bleached like mine, all it's gonna do is frizz it out, okay? It's not gonna look nice. <laughs> so you wanna use shampoos and conditioners that are within the same pH of the hair so it doesn't alter the rest of it, okay? Especially if it's been chemically treated already once. Does that help you with that answer? Yeah, so it doesn't alter? So it doesn't alter. You wanna clean something without stripping its natural oils. Okay. Okay. How about any other questions they have on there? Cause I don't even have the homework in front of me. <laughs> No? I was wondering, um, I couldn't find anything for B or I couldn't understand like B. Okay, I don't know what B is, you have to read it to me. <laughs> it says, explain the effects of acids and alkalis and water in relation to pH. Okay, so we can only do the pH on water solutions, okay, water-based solutions, all right? So acids will always be like when you use the pH litmus paper, it'll turn to the red. The darker the red, the stronger the acid, okay? When you use the uh, alkaline product on there, it's gonna turn like a yellowish green, like a chartreuse kind of color. Okay, and that's how that one works. So by raising it or lowering it, depending on what you're doing, you always wanna make sure you bring it back to its original pH, okay? You always wanna return the hair, skin and nails back to 4.5 to 5.5, okay? keeping what they call the acid balance range. Because sometimes products will say pH balance, but you have to go pH balance of what? Unless it says acid balance, unless it says 4.5 to 5.5, you know it's not the same pH as the hair, skin, and nails. It could be pH balance to shampoo, <laughs> which is like eight. <laughs> okay, so that's what they're basically meaning, I guess. Okay, that help? Yeah. All right, anything else? No? Okay, I'll let you go. I'll see you guys tomorrow. You better do good on your test. <laughs> I'm gonna come and check Thank on you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Bye. you guys. <laughs> see you later. Yeah.